So what did we get? A's and D's. D's are that more than one of the above statements are true. Can I, I, I'm going to assume that those people who answered D also answered A. What do you think? Anyone answer D and think A was not one of those two? Just because there's so many A's and D's, I'm going to start lumping them together. Um, answer A. Someone want to tell me why you answered A? A lot of people did, so you're in agreement with them. Yeah. So conservation of matter, certainly matter is conserved. Um, anyone want to say any more about that, or is that enough? Conservation of matter, I1 is equal to I2. Well, I feel like saying that that's enough. <laughs> um, just the fact that there aren't leaks in here means that whatever goes through past point A, Whatever volume of fluid flows past point A has to go past B, has to go past C, has to go past D, has to go through that pump. There's no other place for it to go. We haven't given it another path. We could have, but we didn't. So if you're saying the two currents are, are the same because uh, of conservation of matter, I'll go along with that. Uh, delta P. How would you find delta P? Pardon me? From the equation, absolutely. Use the model. What, let's look at point, let's look at section one. Will there be a pressure drop, first of all? Is there, let me, let me go back. Is there a gravitational potential energy change? No. Is there a, a change in speed along one? Some, Somewhere. No, so no kinetic energy change, no gravitational potential energy change. Is there a pump between points A and B? No. So all we have left is pressure change and thermal energy change. So is there resistance in that pipe? Hint, it's water, and water is a viscous, somewhat viscous at least, fluid. So yes, there's a pressure. There's a thermal energy change because there's a resistance so there's a pressure drop along that pipe. The pressure drops between A and B if the flow is, counter, is clockwise. So the flow is from A to B and from C to D. The pressure drops from A to B. How about from C to D? Pressure drop? Same discussion, same answer. Pressure drop. Are the resistances is the resistance between points A and B the same as the resistance between points C and D? What do you think? If you had a straw that looked like point, looked like the section between A and B and you tried to drink water, and you had a straw that looked like the section between C and D and you tried to drink water, is one of them easier than the other? And the answer is yes. The resistance is going to be smaller in section one because it's a big old pipe. In fact, that's actually the reason why I put even bigger pipes elsewhere so that those would be resistances that we didn't have to worry about. At some point, the pipe is big enough that it's not, what the, it's not the biggest resistance in the problem. This is the biggest resistance in the problem because that's the tiniest pipe. This one might also be important, but it's not as big a resistance. So are the pressure drops the same? No reason for them to be the same. The only reason there's a pressure drop from A to B is because of the resistance in that pipe. The reason there's a pressure drop from C to D is because of the resistance in that pipe. Those pressure drops are both equal to I times the resistance of the pipe. And although the currents are the same, the resistances are not. So the pressure drops will be different. Yeah? So you just always assume the problem if you're talking about water or any sort of um, that there is resistance unless stated otherwise? Um, unless, I will always assume there's a resistance unless indicated otherwise, yes. Usually, I'll, like on this quiz, I think, don't for, I probably say, don't forget the resistance of the water, or something like that. But, but, but I, even if I, if I don't say anything, you should assume there's a resistance, because there is. 
Yeah. Would the resistance be different if the the resistance really only depends on the, the resistance is is the pipe basically grabbing hold of the fluid a little bit and trying to push it the other way. So the resistance is just due to the amount of pipe there is and the water that's flowing. And so it doesn't really, the resistance just depends on what the pipe is made of, how long it is, its cross-sectional area, and the, what kind of fluid is flowing through it. It really doesn't depend on anything else. It depends on the materials that you have at hand. So it, it doesn't, the resi resistance between A and B is not going to change because you've put other things in there. There may be other things going on, like energy is going up or down, but the resistance of that pipe isn't going to be affected. Unless you have a different fluid, and then it's a different viscosity, and then it's a, a different resistance. Yeah? If you were considering like the entire system, would you only focus on the area of highest resistance? Like if you were looking at from P out to P in, would you only want to calculate the resistance in point two, figure out the flow? Okay, so, so let's think about it. To figure out the flow, we're going to need to worry about um, the pressure difference due to the pump, and then the, so that's a, a energy being added by the pump, and then as this thing goes around here, energy is taken out by resistance, basically, and put into thermal energy. So energy is being dissipated. Um, what if this one had one quarter of the resistance of that one? So most of the energy was taken out there, but a significant fraction of it was taken out there. Can you neglect that? Uh, not really. So you can only neglect it if its, if its resistance is really small compared to the other one. I would say if it's 1% or less of the other one, if it's 100 times smaller, it's probably OK to neglect it. If it isn't, you better consider it. Um, so if a pipe is like twice as long, so like let's say two, <coughs> twice as long, or twice as, or one's twice as wide as two, is that directly proportional to the difference in their, uh, in their R's? Like if it's twice as... If it's, the yeah, the, the resistance depends on the length. If it's twice as long, it's twice the resistance. And it's inversely proportional to the cross-sectional area. So if it's twice the area, then it's half the resistance, as long as the length didn't change. So it, it's, it is a simple linear relationship like that between, or, or inverse relationship, one or the other, between the length and the resistance and the length and the cross section, and the resistance in the cross sectional area. I don't think we're going to ask you complicated questions like that, but it is what you would have guessed, what you did guess. Any more questions about that one? Does the plump pump play a role? Um, yes, because when you write the whole equation for the whole loop, the, the pump is putting in energy and thermal and the resistance is taking it out. So, so those two pieces of pipe, these two pieces of pipe that that supply the resistance are taking thermal energy out. And the pump is putting an equal amount of thermal energy in. So the pump plays a role. If you have a bigger pump, then more energy is being put in. And these resistances have to take more energy out. So how does the resistance take more energy out? How can the thermal energy change get bigger if the resistance doesn't change? What does the thermal energy change depend on? Current times R. If R doesn't change and you put in a bigger pump, current's going to get bigger. So the pump will put in more energy and more thermal energy will come out. That's what's going to happen if you put in a bigger pump for the same circuit. The current will get bigger. 
That's a really good question because we will get to electrical circuits and that's exactly what's going to happen. If I have a bigger battery, I'm going to get a bigger current through the same resistor. All right, similar kind of thing, but I put these two resistances together in different ways. Still clockwise current. Now the two points, A, so section one goes from A right here to B. A is right there. Section two goes from C, which is, you know, basically the same point as A. Uh, all the way around to D. So my question for you now is the same question. Which of the quantities are equal? I through section one equals I through section two, or delta P's are equal, or the R resistances are equal, or... Or what? Talk about it all you want. What two are, what's equal? 